What's going on investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video and today we're going to be looking into Nvidia because I think that the business is very interesting and certainly the outlook for the business going forward is very interesting as well. Not only that, the financial performance of the business is very strong so we'll get into the details of that. Not only is the business interesting though, I also find that the stock is very interesting and as we know one does not necessarily reflect the other. But the reason I say that the stock is interesting is because over the past five years it has been a 10 bagger and returned over 900%. So the business has performed very well, but the stock has arguably performed even better. And we'll get into the details of that. But as you can see here, we're looking at a company that is now valued at over $700 billion, which is incredible. And we're looking at a PE ratio of 73. So straight away, that's an indication to anyone really that this is a high growth, potentially high margin business. And I say potentially because it doesn't always necessarily mean that, but certainly in the case of Nvidia, it definitely doesn't. Like I said, we'll get into the details of that shortly. Now it's really quite simple. There are two parts to the equation in terms of what drives a stock performance or valuation. The first of those is the fundamentals of a business. So how much revenue, net profit, cash flow is the business generating? And the second part of that equation is what multiple of those metrics, revenue, net profit, cash flow, are or is the market willing to pay for that? And the sum of those two is, of course, your valuation. So we'll get into the details of what exactly is driving this incredible increase. Is it fundamentals? Is it multiple expansion? In other words, investors are now willing to pay a higher multiple for the business, or is it a combination of both? So we'll get into that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. I suppose an interesting side note here, though, is that the NVIDIA CEO, who is also the founder, by the way, which is always something very good to look out for, because, of course, the founders are always incentivized very heavily, for the performance of the business to be very good. Anyway, the CEO said that he would be willing to partner with Intel in terms of um, Intel manufacturing their chips into the future, which um, is an interesting point. It's probably a bigger point for Intel than it is for Nvidia, um, but it's an interesting point nonetheless. And that gives you a little bit of a hint in terms of the Nvidia business model. So Nvidia designed these chips primarily graphics processing units, but not only those are many other chips that they're delving into as well, and we'll get into the details of that. Um, but they design these chips and, and then somebody else manufactures them. At the moment, it's primarily Taiwan Semiconductor, but in the future, it may be Intel. So that's just an interesting side note. Now in Nvidia's most recent quarterly results, they announced that they achieved record quarterly revenue of $7.6 billion, which was up 53% on the year earlier. And they achieved record fiscal year revenue of $27 billion, which was up 61%. So incredible rate of growth. Clearly that rate of growth is slowing down slightly as we can see that the most recent quarterly results has a slightly lower growth rate than the annual results, but nonetheless, 53% for the quarter is absolutely incredible. And they've also given us outlook for Q1 of 20, or fiscal year 2023, and we can see that they are expecting revenue of $8.1 billion, which represents 45% growth on the year earlier. So incredible growth rates for this business. And not only that, the margins are very high as well. And we'll get into the detail of that. So we can see here that their gross margins increased from 63% in Q4 FY21 to 65% in Q4 FY22. So that's very impressive. Even more impressive than that, though, is the fact that their operating expenses have declined significantly, which meant that their operating income or their operating margins have increased significantly. So operating income for the quarter Despite the fact that revenue was up 53%, which of course is very strong, the operating income actually rose by basically 100%. So that shows you the level of operational efficiencies that they've been gaining in recent times. Net income was also up by over 100%. So this chart here shows us revenue for Nvidia over the last 10 years. You can see that back in 2012, they were posting revenues of $4 billion. It has increased at a compounded annual growth rate of 21% over that 10 year period, right the way up to now $27 billion. The more impressive thing about this though, right, is not the fact that they've achieved 21% on a compounded annual growth rate basis, What's more impressive is actually their revenue growth has accelerated in recent times. So when, well, I mean, the chart, it tells you the whole story here, right? But actually, if you go back five years and you look at the compounded annual growth rate over that five year period, we're talking about 31% per year rather than 21%. And generally speaking, 
that goes against the grain, right? Because as a business gets larger, it becomes harder for that business to grow. Nvidia is showing that that is not always the case. Now, of course, in times of high inflation, you want to look for a business that has strong pricing power so that they can pass on additional costs to the consumer or the customer. Now, Nvidia is a good example of this as they've just managed, as we mentioned, to increase their gross margins from 63% to 65%, which is very good considering the times that we're in. What's even more impressive to me though, is the fact that over the past 10 years, they have managed to increase their gross margins every single year without fail. So that shows a very, very solid business with a product that many people are after. Now, when we look to operating margins over that same time period, then things are a little bit more choppy. And that's not necessarily surprising given the fact that companies tend to increase and decrease their expenditure on research and development, depending on what the needs of the business are. So this isn't at all surprising, but once again, what is very impressive they went from operating margins of 28% in 2021 to 37% just a year later. And so as a result of that strong revenue growth, good gross margin expansion, good operating margin expansion as well, we've been able to see their net income grow from $253 million in 2011 to effectively $10 billion, you know, sort of 10 years later. So it goes to show you, you know, how strong this business has been performing over the last 10 years. And once again, something that is much more impressive actually is the fact that from 2016, they've gone from $600 million in net income to $10 billion. So that rate of growth is phenomenal. Now this chart here shows us the weighted average diluted shares outstanding. And as we can see, it's remained relatively flat across the entire 10 years. And that's very good to see. And also considering the fact that the business is now very profitable, very very cash flow generative as well. I'm not expecting them to have to issue shares in order to raise additional capital. Another point to note is that they do pay a dividend, but I think it's below 0.1%. So in reality, it's not really something worth paying attention to. I think for the next quarter, they're looking at four cents a share, considering the fact that the stock trades at $280. It's certainly not a stock that you're that you're buying for the dividend, put it that way. So as I said earlier, there are two things that drive the valuation of a business. The first of those being the fundamentals, which we've just gone through, or a high level we've gone through. And clearly the fundamentals of the business are very strong and they've improved by a huge amount. The second thing that drives the valuation of a business is market multiples. So what are investors willing to pay? Now back in 2012, investors were only willing to pay two times sales. Um, and we fast forward to well, sort of November 2021, investors were willing to pay 34 times sales. Now, there's only so long that a business can trade at that kind of multiple form, in all honesty, particularly when you're starting to reach the size that Nvidia has reached, being a $700 billion company. It was fairly inevitable then we was going to see a decline, and we can see a significant decline there. With that being said, we're still trading at 25 times sales, which for a business that is a $700 billion company is, is very, very expensive. There's, there's no two ways about that. So certainly the valuation is very rich, but do the future prospects of the business justify it? So for anybody that is interested in NVIDIA, I would strongly advise you to go and look through their investor day presentation because there's some really good bits in there as to where they see the business going in the future. And within there, they outline that they believe that the total addressable market is a $1 trillion opportunity that coming in the form of $100 billion through gaming, $150 billion through NVIDIA AI enterprise software, another $150 billion through their Omniverse enterprise software, $300 billion in chips and systems, and another $300 billion in automotive through the likes of uh, sort of autonomous driving. So clearly management see huge potential for the business going forward, particularly in the areas of deep learning, automation, and AI. And I have to agree with them in the sense that this is a market that is only going to continue to improve. And as a result of that, naturally their total addressable market continues to grow as well. Now, in terms of where analysts see this business heading over the next five years, they're expecting a compounded annual growth rate over that period of 19%. Now they're expecting 30% in 2023, but they're expecting that rate of growth to eventually slow down, giving them an overall compounded annual growth rate over that period of 19%. Now that would lead them to $70 billion by 2027 compared with the $27 billion that they achieved in 2022. So clearly very strong growth, but they are expecting that that rate of growth does decline. And analysts are also expecting for the operational efficiencies of the business to continue as gross margins and net income margins also grow into the future as well. So then that brings me on to my valuation. Now clearly the business has performed incredibly well historically and I expect the performance of the business to continue to improve going forward. But 
there's always a price that you have to be willing to pay for any business. And as a result of that, it's always important to make sure you perform evaluation based on whatever projections you believe are likely or probable in the future. So for one to five year revenue growth, I've gone for a compounded annual growth rate of 26%. Now that comes in the form of 35% in 2023, followed by 30%, 25%, 20%, and 20%. Now you'll notice that those estimates are higher than what analysts are expecting. Analysts were expecting 19% on a compounded annual growth rate basis. I've increased that to 26%. So you might be asking, well, what's the rationale behind that? And the reason for that is because NVIDIA have a great history of continuously outperforming analyst estimates. So we can see here that although this is based on an earnings per share basis, because that was the only format that I could get it in that shows it's quarter by quarter. But we can see here that on an earnings per share basis, estimated EPS is often outperformed by reported EPS every single quarter. In fact, it has done over the last sort of eight, nine or 10 quarters even. So the business continuously outperforms what analysts are expecting. And as a result of that, I think it's fair to give them some additional credit for what they can achieve in the future. For six to 10 year revenue growth, I've gone with 15% as naturally I expect growth to slow down as the business continues to grow. Gross margins, I've said, will increase from 67% or rather 65% in 2022, right the way up to 70% by 2025. And then similarly for operating margins, they were 37% in 2022. I'm expecting those to continue to increase gradually and reach 50% by 2026. That means that by fiscal year 2032, we will have increased our revenues from $27 billion to $171 billion, and for net profit to have increased from $9.7 billion to around $75 billion as the business not only grows its revenues, but their margins expand as well. Now, in terms of the discounted cash flow, I use the weighted average cost of capital as my discount rate, and Nvidia is quite a volatile stock, and as a result of that, it has a high beta. And as a result of that, it has a high weighted average cost of capital of around 12%. Now we're looking at EBITDA margins increasing over the period from effectively 42% in 2022 to 55% by 2026. And we're looking at unlevered free cash flow conversion increasing from 33% right the way up to 70% by 2026. So I think I'm giving quite a fair amount of credit for increased and improved operational efficiencies within the business and that is sort of reflected within these increased margins. Now, in terms of the rationale for that unlevered free cash flows percentage of EBITDA are continuously increasing, well, given the fact that NVIDIA does not manufacture its own chips, it doesn't have to spend a huge amount of money on manufacturing sites or foundries, and as a result of that, their capex is relatively low. And as a result of that, their unlevered free cash flow conversion, I expect, will continue to increase as the sort of profits of the business increase as well. So then that leads us to the fair value of the business according to those inputs that we've just run through. And we're looking at, according to the discounted cash flow, a fair value of around $170. And according to a multiple of earnings, which I'm using a PE ratio in 10 years time of 20, which I think is more than fair. At most, I would stretch to 25, given the fact that this is a business that will be looking at net profit margins of somewhere between 45 and 50%. And there are, you know, you can probably count maybe 10 businesses that have net profit margins of 50% at that level of revenue and revenue growth. So maybe we can stretch to 25, maybe that would be reasonable as well. We're looking at an intrinsic value of about $200 per share. If you did want to see what a sort of a multiple of 25 would mean, we're looking at an intrinsic value of around $250 a share, which by the way would be $741 in 10 years time. But I'll stick with 20 because I prefer to be conservative. We're looking at a price per share in 10 years time of basically $600. We take an average fair value of both of those. We're looking at a fair value of around $185. Now, of course, if you believe that the growth of the business is going to be higher and the margins of the business are going to be higher, then your valuation may be much higher than this. Likewise, if you think that the margins and the growth of the business will slow down, then you'll get a lower value as well. So really, it's just based on the in sort of the assumptions of your inputs. Now, just out of interest here, right? So hedge funds have actually decreased their holdings in NVIDIA every single quarter, except for the most recent quarter. So in the most recent quarter, they increased their holdings by 1.3 million shares. Now this is hedge funds as a collective, but generally speaking, as the price of NVIDIA and as the valuation of NVIDIA has grown and got hotter, hedge funds have been selling the stock. So that may be a suggestion that they believe that effectively the price has risen greater than the fair value of the business. With that being said, right, I've filtered for only the top analysts on tip ranks, and they believe that over the next 12 months, there is 25% upside with a price target of $350. So 
over the short term, maybe over the next 12 months, you know, the outlook for the business does look very strong, um, considering the fact that you know, there's 21 buy ratings and only five hold ratings, and not a single analyst is suggesting to sell this business. So certainly over the next 12 months, maybe things are looking good for the business. But for me personally, as someone who is a longer term investor, I personally think that the, the valuation has run a little bit too hot. I think it's a fantastic business, but I think that investors would probably do well to wait for things to cool down a little bit. Maybe things never will, but ultimately that's the game of investing. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, thank you.